since you <clears throat> were accurately diagnosed, it's been this two-year progression of pain and obviously suffering. I know that you were inspired by Brittany Menard. Brittany uh, is a woman who went to Oregon so that she could, in her words, die with dignity through medical aid and dying. And when you saw her story, this resonated with how you feel now? It does, because one, I think it takes bravery to do what she did. Um, but she did it with dignity. She did it on her terms, which is how I want it to be for me and my family. Um, I, I think we as the patients choose this way because when we don't want to watch our families suffer, or carry that burden. And I know for me, watching my kids and my husband um, look at me, um, it's taken a lot of joy from them. I know that you were in denial for a long time. Uh, what led to the acceptance of this? Because again, looking mm -hmm. from the outside, you, you have this glow in your face and your eyes, but only you know your body and the pain. That glow is God. <laughs> That's not um, anything for me. Uh, I was in denial for quite a while. Uh, definitely, I, I drowned myself in advocacy work. Um, and wanted work to, <laughs> to get the laws changed. That and uh, just working with blood cancer patients and just raising the awareness. Um, I really got involved with the Leukemia Lymphoma Society and I wasn't imagining advocating for myself. I was imagining advocating for everybody else. And it wasn't until I went to the doctor, to my regular doctor, and he said, Mrs. Olivas, you're in denial. And you're suffering. And you're not even seeing it. And I'm going to send you to a psychiatrist because you need help to accept what is happening to you. And that was the 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 moment of, it is me. Um, Nevada, again, is where you live. It's not legal right. to take, to have death with dignity. I don't want to say take your own life because that's not the right way to right. phrase this. It's have death with dignity. I believe it's eight other states, mm -hmm. um, that eight states that do allow for it. Um, people will wonder, are you a religious person? Very, but I, I, I am religious. I believe in God, but I also believe that God doesn't want me to suffer this way. I believe that he wants me to live an abundant life and live it the best way that I can. My faith is strong. Um, I go to church, I pray, I read, I, I um, you know, this is just a journey that I could tell you I never imagined that I would be on. But I finally came to the decision that I'm going to be a voice while I still can for others that are like me. And I'm going to try and look at this as positive as I can. Is there, <laughs> is there a, a day or a moment that you have in mind that you would follow through? Well, right now, I'm still fighting. I'm not going to give up. Originally, when, when they first figured out the correct diagnosis, they told me, you know, five years. Um, but because I've become more symptomatic and there's other issues that have come into play now, uh, one of my doctors is telling me maybe a year. But I'm not going to receive that because I have so much more life to live. And so you, the doctor is saying one year, you're saying you're not going to receive that. So you said, I have so much life to live. I do. So you want to live your life. Yes. You're not putting an expiration on your journey. No. But you're saying when the time comes, you want to be able to make that decision. Yes, I just want us to be able to have the option. Mm -hmm. Just all I ask when I'm advocating for this particular thing is, you know, just learn about it, educate yourself about it, and give us as the patients that choice. Mm -hmm. Some of us may or may not ever do it, but at least if we have that option, that's all I'm asking.